I'm Rabbi Dan. And I'm Chloe Kagan. And this is our first episode of Teen Talks. Um, I want to know your opinion and your thoughts on um, body image and, and how you, um, in your daily life, do you feel any type of pressure from society um, to look a certain way or do you put any pressure on yourself? What's your thoughts on the topic? Yeah, I definitely think there's a social um, kind of aspect of it. Like, I definitely feel like I am not so much pressured, but I'm being put on the spot for how I look when I go out in public. Like, it's mostly up in my mind for me, I think, because how I see myself is probably much different as to others see me. But I definitely think that kind of, again, like my mind very much controls the pressures that are around me. Do you think your mind is getting it from somewhere, from some other thing you see in movies or magazines, or just in like an internal pressure well, that I th just... I think it's definitely like a human thing. It's very much like ingrained in our brains that we're much more harsh on ourselves than we are on others. But also I think comparison is a very big deal. I catch myself comparing like myself to people all the time, whether that's wow, I'm really mean in personality, or obviously mainly body. I will look at Instagram, Twitter, I'll see magazines at the store that'll say like weight loss, blah, 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 and I'll be like, why don't I look like that? I work so hard and I still don't, you know, look as great as they do. What am I doing wrong? Do you find that that's like a, a healthy thing? Like, do you think there's a way that we can maybe be um, more self-assured and not not comparing ourselves to others and and what they are and what we've been blessed to have um, look I like. think that it's definitely a human thing so you're not just gonna like wake up in the morning and be like I'm great like I feel fine but I definitely think that if other people stop worrying about so much as to what other people think of them I think it'll kind of build upon and people realize like I don't really I, I don't want to say I don't care because Everyone cares right. no matter what they say. That's just a thing. But, like, I definitely think if people kind of lay back on the whole, like, issue, that's when people will start realizing it's not that big of a deal and that it's not that important as people portray it. This is a good place, you know, for you to kind of see that everybody walks through the doors except that everyone's strange in their own way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Once we kind of see that you're serious about it, you, you've got a family of friends here that we it's hard to get anywhere else. You know? Joel Tudor, 39 years old, 14 years of jiu-jitsu, 32 years of surfing. I was a two-time world longboard champion, 2009 world nogi champion, and I teach jiu-jitsu here at Studio 540. There's always something changing. It's an always evolving sport. Uh, you know, that's, that makes it hard for it to become stagnant because there's always some sort of aspect of it that you can learn. Whether it's like the stand-up part, the takedown part, self-defense, you know. I tried to get more fit or whatever, but it is what it is. And, and you know, I'm skinny, I'm happy with being skinny because I learned through Jiu-Jitsu to, like I said, there's a, there's a game for everybody to their body type. If you're smaller, you're going to be able to get under people. If you're long and lanky, you're going to be able to, to catch people's limbs in certain parts of their body a lot easier just because your arms and legs are like rope. It's also nice to go bring, bring people in here and build a game around the way that they are. You know, say, hey, this is for you, this is for you, you can do this. It kind of makes you like a server. There's no punching in here. That's the part that's so cool. We don't teach anyone to hit each other. That's the last thing. Our whole thing is control and, and capitalizing on someone else's spastic movement. And that's sort of what's really cool about this kind of stuff. Is it's a gentle way of like winning a fight. And that's, that's for me, that's the best way. Mike's a quitter. I tell that to everybody. You know, guys give up all the time. It's like, all right, great, you've quit everything. You know, you, failure is a huge part of life. You're not going to succeed right at first. You have to work hard to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. You're a beginner at everything when you start. Get used to it. Hi, I'm Sorel. I'm Raquel. So, not having ego, but just having self esteem, good self confidence, being okay with yourself. How do you? What do you recommend? Do you have any tips or advice on how to achieve that? Do you think you're achieving it a little bit, or? I mean, I consider myself to have some some self confidence, um, but a main point that people don't realize is that it has to come within within you, and I think 
people are always looking to others to find that self-confidence, that self-fulfillment, because from a young age, you, you're always seeking approval that you did a good job, that your drawing is up to par, but just realizing and recognizing that you're the one that creates that self-confidence is really a big important aspect that I think a lot of people miss. I guess it all comes back from that feeling of um, to feel loved and to feel respected by others and to feel appreciated by other people um, when in fact if we have a self-appreciation and a self-respect and a self-love and realize that we're really um, you know, special in our own rights then we don't need that as much and actually funny enough it'll come more when you have that. Exactly. Yeah, it's incredibly attractive when people um, no, like are ha happy with themselves like people are gra gravitate towards happy people and people that are positive um, in, in, in all regards but especially with regard to themselves just looking around and thinking about my friends and people I know I think family even though conf self-confidence comes within yourself I think there are definitely external factors that greatly contribute to that such as family I know like people from loving and caring family homes, it's much easier for them to have the self-confidence, to have the confidence that someone else believes in them, maybe helping them lead to the stuff that they believe in themselves. So although it's important that it comes from you, I think you can only get there with the help of friends or family supporting you all the way. Right, having good family, good friends. Surrounding good yourself system. with good people. Hi, I'm Justin Gittleman. Welcome to Local Juice Company. Lachaim. Local Juice Co. really began as a passion, as being a uh, local juice consumer. I found that San Diego was missing a uh, premium level, more quality in its options. And so I mixed uh, my passion for juicing with a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit and uh, that's what created it. Part of our uniqueness is what I refer to as an ultra premium quality juice beverage. And that makes up four factors. We use 100% organic produce, uh, we cold press versus centrifugal juicing, and uh, we don't process, so everything's raw and fresh and only has a five day shelf life. Tonics are infusions of ingredients that cause a specific reaction in the body. Uh, the Redeem Tonic is for digestion, Inspire is an alkalizer. It helps to reduce acidity, balancing your pH. The Defend is an immune booster. Uh, Change Agent helps with anti-inflammation. And then Ginger, uh, we refer to it as nature's tequila. It helps with digestion and as well anti-inflammation. Um, so with live nutrients and enzymes in organic produce and uh, consuming it through a beverage versus maybe a salad, um, tastes good, it's refreshing, uh, helps create a lot of uh, mental alertness gives you more energy, you don't feel as sluggish or tired from other sorts of beverages. Um, one of our goals is to create a uh, healthy, health conscious fast food on the go. Uh, I've always said if you're not juicing at home, we want to be your second best choice. So keeping those factors of ultra premium and offering you a fresh product is what we're going for. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kedeshanu v'nitzvotah v'sivanu l'givroa mezuzah. So what would you say to people who are really, you know, kind of down on themselves for, you know, how they look, if they don't feel that they're you know, living up to the pictures that they see, and what do you tell yourself? As you've grown and you've matured, do you see it a little different than you did a couple years ago? Um, yes. A couple years ago, I was very hard on myself. I wouldn't even go into, like, dressing rooms and try things on because I was convinced that they would look bad on me, and I think, um, just, I kind of, I really did just wake up one day and I was like, like, this, I'm so over this, I'm so over waking up in the morning and looking at myself and being like, oh my god, you're disgusting. And I know I work hard, I go to the gym every day, I eat very healthy, like, maybe I, maybe my body wasn't built the way to look, like I have a six pack, or I have, you know, like, the greatest arms in the world, all these things, like, I, I think the biggest thing is people, like, to help themselves kind of get out of that hole is everybody is different, like, that's just plain and simple. You're not going to look like the girl on the magazine cover, even though the girl on the magazine cover doesn't look like herself. Right. But I definitely think that it's very much so just, you kind of have to let go of 
comparing yourself and I know that's very vague to say just to let go but just let go of just everything in your mind and just kind of focus on yourself and I think when you realize that you can do anything you set your mind to that's when really just the body issues will be completely defeated and you'll be on your way to success. There's a famous story of, uh, you know, the famous story, biblical story of Adam and Eve, and when they ate from the tree, um, it says that they got really ashamed and they clo looked everywhere for clothes. They were naked before and they went looking for clothes because they were really ashamed. And uh, Jewish mysticism explains that what happened was before they ate, their bodies were luminous. When you looked at another person, you saw their soul, you saw who they were, their personality behind the body. And after they ate, the body became just like they say that the skin of an animal is a hide, it's like the body was hide. It, it, it hid who they were inside. And, and today, when we look at a body, another person, the first thing we might see is just the body, and we think that's them. And we look at ourselves, we see the body, and think that's just us. But we know that we're much more than that. We're much more than the body. And there's a soul behind, there's a much deeper part of the person. Like they say, the eyes are the windows to the soul, that when you look, you can see that there's something more to the person. The body is just, it, it lives, it dies, but there's a, the person who they are inside is, is much more than that. And we can see that when someone has um, their personality shines through. So thank you so much for joining us at Teen Talks. Um, I really hope you join us in the future. We'll have a lot more videos and, and a lot of guests and really cool uh, features. Uh, subscribe and like us uh, below and uh, share with others. And uh, we'll see you soon.